Welcome to the Mind of Basketball Podcast, also known as the MOB Podcast. I am Evan. And I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast, where we recap, break down, analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. How are you this Sunday afternoon, Ja? No, I'm doing good, bro. I'm doing good. How, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm just hoping that the Giants can make it to the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> with a five with a six and ten record, but we shall we shall see. This ain't a football podcast, so let's just skip over that. <laughs> uh I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope everyone will have a good day. Much to discuss until the games of basketball, even though there was a little amount of games played, but a lot have happened. A lot has happened in those games, so we're going to jump right into it. First off, let's talk about the last game that happened last night, which was the Raptors and the Pelicans. A close, tight battle, but the Pelicans were able to win and close out late in the fourth quarter. So let me get your thoughts on this game, John. Um, so when watching this game, it was more like both teams, even though they were exchanging buckets, it was more like in spurts. Like, you know, like, you know, one team – Got on, a, got on a hot hand for a short period of time, then the other team got on a hot hand for the short period of time. And then it was just that until all up into the fourth quarter in which it became like, you know, a more close game. Pelicans looked like they were going to run away with it. And then the Raptors made a comeback, good decision. They were disciplined on defense and they decided to make good decisions in terms of their shot making and where they should pick their spots from. And as a result, they was able to bring back the lead. But then Pelicans being who they are, like, you know, Eric Bessel hits a big shot and then they ran away with the game. Yes, Eric Bessel did hit that big shot and that really closed the, the game for them. Um, You really did a good breakdown of the game, so I don't have to say that much. But what I will talk about, or rather who I will talk about, is what's your nickname for him? Mile P. Yeah, when he's playing like this, because he ain't spicy. <laughs> Of course, we're talking about Pascal Siakam, you know, uh, believe the most improved player from two years ago. Yes. You know, the man that scored 41 in the finals game, an NBA champion, the one who's supposed to take the crown after Kawhi left and lead this Raptor team for the future. The man hasn't been playing well. Let's just say that. Yeah, he hasn't, no. The only time the Raptors won, he wasn't even playing. <laughs> I mean, he had 10 points this game. And he got fouled out with eight minutes left in the game. That's not a good look, especially as their star player who's supposed to be their closer. That's not a good look. But hey, I, I tell you, this is what happened when, you, like, you know, when you annoy people with these nicknames, man, like, you know, they got to live up to it. It's like, you know, it's like spicy. You're like, it's more like a mild chicken. Like, no, <laughs> this is not, not, not no spicy chicken. That's mild chicken, man. I swear. He, he got to do better than this. He, he's, he's getting. For a person who has gotten better and better, especially coming in with that Raptors team when they had DeMar and stuff, and seeing how he had to take a backseat and learn and grow and develop his game into what it is, because he put in a lot of hard work. To yes. see him come to this level to yet be playing like this to start off, I know it's been a rough year because it was for everyone, but it makes no excuse. If you are the star player of this team, we expect you to do more than what you're doing right now. I 100% agree. Uh, you can't be playing like this. You can't have 10 points in 24 and 24 minutes played and you're the best player on the court. You cannot foul out with eight minutes left in a close game. Mm -hmm. That can't happen. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really all I, much I want to say about my yeah. LP. <laughs> Until he steps his game up, he's my LP. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the Pelicans real quick. What do you think about Brandon Ingram's performance? Oh, man. He was cooking, man. He was cooking. He was cooking. He was creating. He was showing off the skill. He was showing how much, how, what we always knew he could become. But, yeah, he just needed the right situation. And these past two years have been the right situation for him. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? With mm -hmm. him having an opportunity to be more free, have the ball in his hands more, because and be more of that scoring option with that ability to just like you know get his own way in terms of creating his own shot, this was perfect for him. He he was he was just putting all his imprints on the game offensively. You know, he was also putting the imprints on the game offensively on the Pelicans team. Was that was that also Zion? Of course, the number one pick in the draft. 
<laughs> who else would it be? I mean, he's just showing his potential. He's been showing his potential this whole entire season. You've seen that spin movie hit on OG. Yeah, nah, that was <laughs> Come on, put up the footage. Put up the footage. Jeez. With someone his size, what? He shouldn't like be that. doing that. Yeah, he shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. He's, he's, he's gonna be a superstar in this league, and you could just you can you can see. You yeah. see, he was born for this. He was born for it. And him and Brandon Ingram have been playing great together. Exactly. Still coexisting, but also getting their buckets too mm-hmm. individually. And I think it's great. I think great for two young players to have that kind of, you know, be able to score and yet not hinder the other person's ability. Yeah. Because you could see it like, you know, like Zion is that guy who, like, you know, who could, if you don't want the ball in his hands, he could get his, 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 his points off with just movement and being more and like, having, like being more off ball and having teams need to be aware. That he doesn't have the ball in his hands, but yeah, he's so good at his move, his mobility, and ability to finish inside that he could catch it on the inside. He could just go up, like you know what I mean. He could just body people. So you got to be aware of that. And Brandon Ingram, and that helps Brandon Ingram because, like you know, with all that movement, it kind of in a way creates space for him to do him. Also, yeah. especially it makes it more of a expendable situation for that whole team. Yeah, that's a that's a um that's a great point that you made. That's a really great point. Also, uh, Eric Bosa looked pretty nice in that system that they got going on in New Orleans. I'm not going to lie to you. I yeah. was, you know, I was skeptical about the trade of them trading Holiday, but then once I heard they got three first-round picks, you can't go wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But so he's not a bad player. We all know that. Uh, I felt like he should do better in the playoff situations. But... <laughs> Drew Bledsoe. If... <laughs> Come on, let's, let's, let's give him confidence. Give him confidence. Chill, all right, chill. All right. But yeah, he had a really good game, 19 and 10. And he's been playing pretty well for the Pelicans so far as the start of the season. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been playing really good as basketball. That's just a team. They're four and two. They're in a good spot right now. Mm-hmm. Let's hope they can keep it going, but we have to see. Yeah. Well, but so I feel like this is more of a like, you know, this is this team is more of a fast paced running gun team. And I feel like that fits Bledsoe's play style real, really perfectly. He, he's a dude who's more fast-paced and aggressive. Yeah. That's, it, that's all. Yeah. That's all I want to say. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Fine. He does fit that system right with this um yeah. style of play. But we'll have to see if the Pelicans can keep this up and keep their winning ways going. And we'll have to see if the Raptors can bounce back because they're one and four right now. They have one win being only against the Knicks. So... We we'll have to see what the former champions can do. But all right, to the game at the top of the day last night, which was the Rock, the Rockets, James Hardenless Rockets, and the Sacramento Kings. And this was just a really fun game to watch, really. Oh, uh, just John Wall and De'Aaron Fox, um, <laughs> two speed demons. It was really, it was really entertaining game to watch, but the Rockets was able to pull away in that fourth quarter. Let me get your thoughts, John. Well, these are two of the best offensive teams in the league right now, especially in the Western Conference. Um, and you saw it on display, on all on display last night, just exchanging buckets, bucket after bucket after bucket, and it was a close game until, until Houston got into the way of that and everything. Like you know what I mean, just, just doing their thing. John, the 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 duel between John Wall and De'Aaron Fox goes to show you how, like you know, no matter how nice the student is, the student can never beat the master. Like you know what I mean? Like you just seen it on, you just seen it on the display. Like you know, De'Aaron Fox doing his thing, John Wall doing his thing, and John Wall looked like if, even though he's not that at that point, he was looking like as if he was back to his own self again. Yeah, he was pretty damn close. He was pretty damn close to looking like that last night. He was just out there yeah. balling defense on defense and offense. People forget that he was one of the best two-way players in the league when he was healthy. Mm-hmm. I mean, and he was proving it tonight. He's just his on-ball ability, off-ball ability, able to like mm-hmm. distract and poke balls, poke the ball away. Um, exactly. Like he, it was and really, it's really nice seeing him back. I'm not gonna lie, it's really nice seeing him back. 
And let's just talk about his speed. Like, bro, the way he was still blowing by people in a way, even though most of the things he was, there was some layups he couldn't finish, of course, obviously. But, like, you know, the way he was just, like, changing speeds and everything was just, like, it's just, yeah. like, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, that fast twitch, it was just, it was out of control, yo. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, and he's, he's going to be a big help for this Rockets team, mm-hmm. depending on the future, whether Harden's there or not. And he's just a he's a great fit for any team, really. He's a perfect point guard for a lot of teams. Perfect point guard. Exactly. Uh, also, Christian Wood. He's just has he not just been going off this this season so far? Well, well, yeah. But again, if you've seen him in Detroit, you knew that that, that this was possible, bro. You know oh, it's that- almost like Detroit could should have kept him. <laughs> well, if he was uh, stayed in the train, nobody would know him still, though. <laughs> so let's just keep it like that. Like, you know what I mean? He, he comes to a contending team, a team that even though I didn't have as, like, you know, as a championship, like, contender or anything, or still playoff contention, you know, he, he's, like, you know, he, he's just been balling. He's just been balling. Because, like, I'm surprised because I really saw DeMarcus Cousins play this game. Yeah, he got in foul trouble early. Mm-hmm. And, and yet Christian would pick up the slack right then. He was like, don't worry, Boogie. I got you, bro. And like, he just like, you know, he just went off. He was doing everything offensively. He was, he was stretching out the floor. He was banging down the post. He was rebounding. He was just doing everything that need, that people needed him to do in order to like, you know, win this game or be it, have a high impact. Yeah. He was really doing everything like a young Andre Iguodala. We keep saying it. Just really doing everything, doing all the dirty work, putbacks, rebounds. It doesn't matter. You you need a backdoor cut, he's there. Like he's he's a really phenomenal and fun player to watch. And just keep a, keep an eye on him because he's he'll surprise you with all the things that he can do at 6'10. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh Jaz, any any players that you want to talk about? Any player performances? Any you know who you gotta games? apologize to? You already know who you gotta apologize to. This is- just, just say it right now. Just say it right now. You know, look at all I gotta say. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. Well, I watched, I watched the Cavs versus Hawks game, and don't get me wrong, I, I will admit the Hawks team looked like they was making a big jump here. Like they looked like they was about to, like it looked from early that they was about to just go away with this game. But you know, like you know, the Cavs said no, and most importantly, Colin Sexton said no. <laughs> he said no. Hit a big. He was coming up big. He was coming up big. He was making big shots. And, like, you know, he made that last three to, like, you know, basically give his team the lead. And it was kind of a dagger in a way. And even though the Hawks tried to, like, you know, get back with their own. And don't get me wrong, Trey Young was still coming up big, too, down that period of time. Yes, he was. And all I got to say is you, you got to make an apology, bro. You got to – right, right. I have no, I have no problems admitting when I'm wrong, you know. Colin Sexton, I do apologize for saying that you're not Trey Young. Now, <laughs> I might, I might, uh, I still don't believe that you are at Trey Young, you know, I, at, the, at that level, or you're better than Trey Young. But mm-hmm. maybe the way I said it was a little more, you know, disrespectful. Yeah, you sound, you sound like the ESPN dude who did the Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> That's what you sound like. <laughs> Casual. Don't do that. Don't 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 nah, do that. Not, don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, what I said was more in the right than what the other guy yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it just like he disrespected. Yeah, you right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I take that. Well, back. yeah, Colin Sexton. He did. He did. Um, he did kind of told me, you know, shut up. He has no idea who I am, but he did tell me to shut up. <laughs> you know, and he proved it. He had that big, basically the game winner, mm-hmm. and he had a big twenty, good twenty seven points. Yeah. He was the leading scorer of the night, and he's. Been balling the entire season, really. Yeah, man. He's got the Cavs playing winning basketball. Exactly. Like, again, he's their bright spot. Like, you know, I know it's a small sample size because it's probably like their sixth game. But, like, you know, he's just been going off. He's been showing why Cleveland is the team to be out for right now. Nobody expected the Cavaliers to be out, to be the team to look out for. Most definitely not me. I was never going to look at them, except for just Colin Sexton because I knew that he was good. But it was just like, you know, He's shown that, like, you know, the Cavs could likely make some noise. Yeah, this is surprising. I will have to see more from the Cavs, though, down the stretch against better teams. Um, 
this was a good win against the Hawks. The Hawks has been playing really good this season. Yeah. So, but I'm talking about teams like um, Nets, Lakers, Clippers, mm-hmm. Suns, Sixers, Celtics, Rap. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Heat, <laughs> Bucks. Um, <laughs> it was no need to do that to them, bro. I, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's understandable. It's understandable why you say that. So, um, never mind. <laughs> yeah, but this is. I mean, Colin Sexton has really, really gotten into his own now. I think a lot more eyes are people are. You know, he's getting more attention now. Yeah, because of how he's playing and how the Cavs are playing, and they're playing really good. And he's playing really good, and he should get all the credit he yeah. deserves. Well, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, what I want to talk about was, of course, you see the hat, you see, you see the hoodie. Mm-hmm. I mean, orange and blue. What can I say? New York, New York, New York. Look, Reggie, look. Re- really, Reggie Miller crying right now. Look, look, <laughs> Let's look. go. <laughs> what? Want, well, uh, even though you're not better than the Nuts, and you probably never take over their claim. I would like to As apologize the to the Knicks organization for always doubting you guys. You know, and like I'm not gonna lie, last podcast I did have you guys losing, but hey, you you, you proved me wrong. You proved me wrong. You beat out Victor Oladipo and thing Brogdon and and Sabonis. And Bro- so, Brogdon had a really good game. Also, mm-hmm. he was cooking. He was really cooking. But um, Brogdon's not RJ Barrett, so <laughs> no, he's, I mean, I'm I'm playing. I'm playing. RJ Barrett really did have a good game also. It just his the games that he have like this really gets me upset because I just know the next game he's gonna have like 10. Because he's just really inconsistent sometimes. Yeah. Uh and this is the second game that he had against the Pacers where he we did really good. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the other games, he's been struggling. Yeah. That's what I mean, the inconsistency level of him. If he just fixes that and if he can stay himself each and every game, then he's going to be a much better player. Well, yeah, they, yeah, there's no question. He is the Knicks' future. He he has the biggest potential out of everyone on that team so far outside of Toppin. Yes. But like, you know, he, he, you know, but yeah, you're right. He needs to stop being inconsistent. He needs to learn how, like, you know, if you want to be known as that star that people set you out to be with that, was it second or third third pick? With that third pick, you 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 had to learn how to, to produce on a nightly basis, not just one night and then take a, um a night off three times, and then you produce on the fourth night. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, things like that. You're not gonna last in the league long. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But yeah, this was a really good gutsy win by the Knicks against the a good Pacers team. I mean, the Pacers have been good every year since. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what? <laughs> I think I've, the I've, 90s yeah so yeah uh and mitch robinson thank you for the block <laughs> by the way <laughs> on brogdon i believe uh yeah also apology to the Knicks too because i doubted i doubted y'all as well i mean i mean of course i doubted y'all yeah left me nothing but doubt for the past 20 years but <laughs> nonetheless <laughs> i'm proud that we're actually playing good basketball we're actually playing hard and we're showing effort and tom thibodeau is really been helping the young players of the knicks and i really love to see that yeah but all right uh all right now time for predictions as usual john you know you know the deal is so i don't even have to get into it all right starting off with the first prime time game that we'll be going over which is a rematch of Two nights ago game, I believe, which was the Celtics and the Pistons, where the Pistons up the Celtics. So who you got in this game? Oh, it's Celtics all the way. I know Pistons, the trade the good thing, like you know, a charm luck a charm came their way, but I got I got the Celtics winning taking this one. Yeah, it sucks as well. A big game for one team, and it's an interesting game for us, which is our next primetime game, the Wizards or the Nets. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a I'm gonna go with a little bit of faith here. I'm gonna go with the with the with the Wizards. I'm gonna go with the Wizards. <laughs> gonna go with the Wizards. Wow! So you saw the Bradley Beal rock a baby like Russ Westbrook did. So now you believe in him? <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, uh, well, anyway, it's a new year, new them. A new year, new them. 
All right, we'll see. Well, unless they have an answer for Katie and Kyrie, I got the Nets. <laughs> I mean, their defense has been terrible, so why why would I suddenly say, hey, your defense has been terrible, but I think you can beat Katie and Kyrie. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at, look at, look at, look at, wait. I, like, I chose them the last time and they lost. So, like, you know, I'm just going to try to choose them again. I hope that's all right. Won. All right. Hey, crazy things have happened in the league. So, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not going like to say anything else. All these by 50 points. <laughs> hey, we didn't have a blowout last night. We're yeah, doing good past two nights. We're doing good past two nights. Just stay on this stay on this track, NBA. Just stay on this track. Okay, you, they better. All right. <laughs> Lakers or the Grizzlies? Lakers. All right, Lakers as well. Nuggets or the Timberwolves? Nuggets. Nuggets. Jazz or the Spurs? Spurs. Jazz. Bulls or the Mavericks? Mavs. Mavs. Oh, this should be a good game. Clippers or the Suns? (laughs) Devin Booker game winner. I also have the Suns. Another great test for the Suns, who got two big wins against the Nuggets and the Jazz in their previous games. Mm-hmm. And lastly, the game, the last game that we'll be talking about, which is the Blazers or Warriors rematch for the game two nights ago. I feel like the I'm going to still go with the Blazers, but I feel like the Warriors are going to come out are going to because you know how it is with them playing back to back same teams. Against yeah, the, the Warriors. I feel like they're going to. Make this a closer game than what happened last time. So I don't feel that way. And I got the Blazers. <laughs> I just, I don't I don't know, man. I, the Warriors is gonna think I you're gonna take a lot more time for them to get mm-hmm. going. Yeah, yeah. So and I don't think it's gonna start tomorrow. I mean, yeah, but, I mean tonight. Yeah, but hey, look at all we gotta do, we gotta watch the game. At you're right, you're right. Well, we we watch do. the game and watch what happens. Oh, by the way, how do you feel about these um, with the NBA's, you know, thing to have them play the same team back to back to limiting the traveling, whatever? It's it's smart in a way, but also it's just like it's just like I was just like, dang, it's like they it's like it's like I can understand because it's to fit into the 72 game schedule. But it's just like it's like, dang, like it's like then they just play each other just like like 30 minutes ago. Well, they also done that so, so they won't have to travel because of COVID. Yeah, yeah, it's it's smart. It's smart. I like. But how do you feel about the like the team, like the actual you know games being played by the same teams back to back? To be honest, I don't even know, man. I'm just gonna be honest. I don't know. All right, all right. I just want to see your opinion about it. Yeah. It's um, weird. I just don't know. Yeah, yeah, it is weird having the same team play play back to back, especially when that team just got blown out. <laughs> but all right, now I think it's time to wrap things up. Any any final thoughts? Anything that we didn't cover? Any news? Anything like that? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, I guess that's it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything. No, that's fine. You're not gonna always have a thing. You're gonna, you're always not gonna have you know everything. Yeah. But uh, Knicks win, if you didn't hear. Uh, we're 3-3, three and three, and we're clearing the playoffs, so go Knicks. But <laughs> thank you guys for watching this, today's pod. Make sure you tune in to tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And once again, I am Evan. And I'm Ja. And this was the Minor Basketball Podcast.